Is it water that's been left on the ground? <laughs> I think that was her water. Is that water? How are you guys? Good. 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 Thank you. So, what should we talk about? <laughs> talk about, I'm going to ask my question I asked your counterpart, which is, how is it you find love in the middle of the apocalypse? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you tell me. Uh, that's an interesting thing, isn't it? That I guess... I guess sometimes, you know, romantics us in a moment that's maybe less than perfect or not a moment where we're looking. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely a shocking sort of setting for romance to happen. But I feel, I feel like it, it's also the kind of thing that happens in real life where we run into, we run into the, the right person at the wrong time. And sometimes it works out and sometimes it's too long in the moment. Um, yeah, I think I think that's clever too that they've chosen to, to set sort of a connection inside this horrible situation. That was fun to play. It's a very different relationship where you can't get within like, you know four to six feet of each other. It makes it challenging. Yeah, it makes it challenging to forge a bond if you're you know, getting to know each other from six feet away. Yeah, definitely interesting. Yeah, I think, fortunately, he's, he's the kind of guy who probably hears what she's saying, um, whether or not he takes it well, you know, and, and responds to it positively in the moment, that's, you know, up for debate, but I, I do feel like he's the kind of person who will walk away from hearing something like that, and it'll sort of stay with him and nag at him. Um, because, you know, at least for me, in, in playing and I look at this guy, he feels like the type of person who, even though he's hardened, even though he's closed off, even though he, you know, wants to be this, like, this tough guy, you know, just a little less caring, um, he, he's got this, like, teddy bear thing inside of him, and he's actually quite warm, um, and through whatever he's gone through in his life, he's, he's shut that part of him off. Um, and he feels it open with her a little bit. Even in like the first episode, we see a glimmer of that. Um, but he's a little softer with this, this woman for some reason. And, uh, and I think, yeah, when she says, like, hey, stop being a child, like, grow up and do something that can help people, I think, I think that taps into that, that really actually emotionally evolved part of it that he suppresses. Hopefully it makes him do the right thing. <laughs> I like that your character is one of um, very few cops in the court. Um, and he's never been tested like this. Can yeah. you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, we, uh, you know, David, who plays Lex, David and I talked a lot with um, law enforcement officers. We worked with LAPD and um, with Atlanta PD officers and researching, um, you know, police skills. And, and we did some exercises to learn a lot of the standard uh, training tools that officers would have and things we actually don't end up using that much on the show. You know, we're not doing routine traffic stops, but those skills sort of inform uh, the way that you approach a uh, high tension situation, um, especially a viral outbreak. It's, it's the same concept of, you know, keeping your distance, observing hypervigilance, and, and trying to assess the situation and protect your partner. Um, and that was valuable. And also the other side that was valuable was hearing, um, you know, what the protocol actually is for a situation like this. And it's, it's terrifying to know that there's not, there's not. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't go any further than that. There's not, um, this, this doesn't, we would watch the show and think this doesn't happen here. Um, and this, this can't happen and this, this, stuff, this won't happen. But it, we think that until it does. With any catastrophe, be it you know this massive evil terrorism in the world that we're facing right now, um, with ISIS or, or even Al Qaeda going back to 9/11, when things like that happen, it's the moment moments before that that we say, you know, not here. And that's what these people face with, with this situation, with this virus. Is, um, 
the law enforcement isn't necessarily prepped for it because no one's expecting it. Um, so they're trained in the things that they're supposed to expect. And so when you give these officers who are hypervigilant and are given the training for other skills, they're forced to adapt those skills into this brand new situation. Um, and hearing from a few officers when I said, like, what would you do in this situation? And seeing their faces just sort of drop. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I, I mean, I guess I would do this. You know, they're, they're improvising. And that's, that was huge for us to discover, is that there, there isn't a right or wrong way. So watching these characters on the show, everyone's reaction, to me at least, is, um, is believable. Because, you know, there's no way to predict how you would handle yourself and the officers are no different. They're forced to use the wonderful skills and tools that they have in a totally bizarre and structureless situation. So, yeah, in the long winded answer. <laughs> <laughs> how do you think you would react in that situation if it did happen? That's the thing we start to ask, isn't it? When we watch the show. Um, gosh, I mean, the only thing that feels safe, you know, knowing as much as I know about like our version of that. You have a heads up. Right? I have a little bit of a heads up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it's anything like that, I feel like I understand it a little bit. You're like, I'm uh, ready for this one. All right. But yes, yes, you hide. Yeah. Like, I, I, I can't imagine, I mean, in my character, that I, I really, that was something that my, my empathy really uh, was able to connect to in working, you know, in this guy's situation was he's doing these tasks that nobody would want to do. No one wants to willingly go out and face this thing. Um, and be the one to bring them in, be the one to handle them in the facility, you know, while they're alive, while they're dead. No one wants that job. Um, you want to stay alive, and exposing yourself to the virus willingly seems like the craziest thing you can do. But it's, you know, it's... Um, it's hard to say, like, I would just protect myself and my loved ones and be selfish, but it's also, you know, that is our instinct. So, and also seeing, like, you know, it doesn't go well for a lot of people who don't play it safe um, in the world. So I would <laughs> grab my loved ones and hide. I would, you know, I would be out. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you so much.